welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, we are going to discover the hidden gem, well, it was hidden for me, of American training. But before we get in, before you meet my wonderful guests, need a few housekeeping rules. We are not live this evening, so if you'd like to email me, you can always email me a question or a suggestion for a future topic at talk at bcattv.com. Org. And I would like to thank the crew for today's episode. We have Chris Flaherty, dire- um, staff member here, as well as Tad Stefanak and Jen Dodge, because we are in the daytime, so we have our wonderful BCAT staff keeping everything up and running. We also have our wonderful volunteers, Stephanie Floridas and Jolie Atwood, who give up their summer vacation to come on BCAT and help me out with something to talk about. And we actually have the kids here, so no daddy date night tonight. But I want to thank all the viewers at home and in the town of Burlington, as well as the cast and crew um, and the staff at BCAT, because we recently had the 4th of July parade in which something to talk about participated in. I think that was wrong grammar. But we participated in the parade and we had a really fun float, bubbles, we gave away mini flying discs and the crowd was very supportive. And the parade committee honored us with a ribbon for outstanding float. So I wanna thank the parade committee, Mike Runyon and all of his colleagues. And I wanna thank the crew for helping me put the float together and marching in 95 degree heat. And the community for supporting us. So, okay, before I, continue on down that path. I would like to welcome my wonderful guests for this evening. We have Jessica Cousins and Noah Venuti. Did I say that right? Venuti. Venuti. Oh, (laughs) dyslexia. (laughs) Venuti. Uh, Okay. From American Training Incorporated, which is located in Wakefield. And I recently found out about your organization when my daughter volunteered at the local Special Olympics. Awesome. So... It was a really cool event for her. I was honored that she volunteered to help some of her colleagues from school. She is in third grade, or she was in third grade. And I really appreciate your taking the time to contact me and respond to me and come and tell me more about it. Absolutely. So before we get into what American Training does, can you guys tell me a little bit about your backgrounds, where you grew up, how you came to the Burlington area, and what made you become involved in American Training or American Training Incorporated? Is there a difference? American Training Incorporated. Um, So I'm from Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, I went to Beverly High School, Salem State University with a bachelor's in history. And we obviously have the site in Wakefield. So we actually volunteered at the Special Olympics as well. We were there as a a student. I know we had a booth set up. So we were giving away water bottles and all kinds of little like like freebie type of things, you know, get our name out there. <laughs> and what made you decide to start working for them? I mean, it's just passionate and, you know, okay. helping people, always wanting to, you know, okay, yeah, help people. Okay. <laughs> Don't mean to put you on the spot, but it's like, <laughs> uh, Noah. Um, yeah, um, so I'm actually from the South Shore. Um, then I moved out here about 12 years ago. Okay. Um, and I've worked in the social service field for about seven years. Okay. Um, starting with mental health, but then I kind of ventured into um, individuals with disabilities, okay. um, which was like the best move because I love this field and I love this population. Yay. Um, and through a different company, I actually had somebody that I was bringing to um, American Training. So, oh. and then I got to learn more about them and then I got involved with them and started my career with them. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So, can you tell me a little bit about American Training Incorporated and what they do and how long they've been around? Just give me a brief history of the organization. Yeah, so American Training's a um, very passionate and dedicated family of colleagues. Um, we create meaningful, life-changing experiences. So we service adults with disabilities in our local communities. Um, we have our office over in Wakefield, but we also have our main office in Andover and a, another day hub oh. facility located in Lowell as well. Okay, so it's just like a regional thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Yep. So um, one of our mission is to bring out the best in everyone we touch because every individual life matters, and that's really what drives us for our excellence. Um, 
We started out in 1979 in Lawrence, and oh, they've just expanded okay. ever since. Um, we have our day programs. Um, we also have Vanway, which is our transportation company, specialized housing, oh. ISS, IHS, and Starworks. Wow. Yep. Okay. And we're going to find out all about all those, those <laughs> momentarily. So what exactly do you do? Are you in marketing or? I'm actually the program director for the program Wakefield director. site. Okay. So I oversee their day have, um, which has oh. a bunch of different components to it for the services we provide. Cool. Now, you said adults with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Is adults considered 18 or 21 or 25? Because depending 22 on. 22 and over. 22 and over, yep. okay. And are these just physical disabilities? No, nope, they can be on? mental health as well. Yep. Oh, okay. So we do all kinds of disabilities. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So, I don't know, are we going to talk about wow magic a little later on? or? Well, I think we could talk about it now. Because I looked yeah. on your website and it's like, wow <laughs> magic. I'm like, wow, that's pretty happy. Well, impressive. and. <laughs> Yeah, so our wow magic is really what I think separates us from our competitors. Okay. Um, our wow magic is our philosophy. So as I said, you know, we want to bring out the best in everyone we touch. Um, okay. But we also have seven core values as well. So okay. wow magic culture is definitely one of them. Having exceptional people, we're family centered, ethics okay. and respect, communication, community and giving back and financially sound. Um, oh, cool. Our wow magic can be a lot of the big events that we have, which mm -hmm. we get known for because we do have really great decorations. We get really into Yay. the themes. Mm -hmm. um, this year's theme was the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, so oh, that was our destination. Um, so it was really great. Wait, so a destination, what's a destination? So we pick one place. So we don't want to say it's Harry Potter. We want to, oh. we go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Oh. And we really go into okay. it too. Um, we had our May guest gala and we actually had the rideable like a uh, train that was the Hogwarts Express. Oh, mm -hmm. fun. Um, they had picture booths from the prison cells from that whole part of the book. Oh, um, all different okay. kinds of things. We had a candy bar, which was all Honey Dukes, which was themed for Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Oh <laughs> no, did you have the jelly beans? Oh, of course. <laughs> we have all the great stuff like that. So, um, but also, you know, we have our other holidays as well and events throughout the year that we oh, incorporate okay. our wow magic into. Um, we do Christmas in Oz where we have these big red ruby slippers that are outside mm. they're like 40 feet tall or something wow. like that they're huge it's meant like are they attached to like the striped socks and like put on against the building so it looks like the building no never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we it also will be now yeah i know right <laughs> i'm like ooh, that sounds fun <laughs> Ding dong. So we also do um, our tie-dye day as well, which we just Ooh. had back in mm -hmm. June, which is amazing. So what our guests do is they get to come, they get to tie-dye, you know, whether it's a t-shirt, a hat, a backpack. Um, we have a catered cookout. We have, have all types of- tie-dye a backpack. That sounds kind of challenging. You it know, is. Wrapping the rubber bands but around it. And, yeah. It looks awesome in the end. Yeah, it did. Ooh, <laughs> sure. So we get all kinds of activities for the guests to do while they're there. Um, they get to play carnival games. So this is another big event that we do that mm -hmm. all the sites, all specialized housing, everyone's oh, invited. Okay. Um, we do another day where Vanway, our transportation company, does chili truck wagon, where they get like one of those old covered wagons and they oh, get okay. a bunch of little animals to come in, so like a little petting zoo mm. and all kinds of good food and activities for the guests to do. Um, so we just have all these great examples of like our wow magic events where we always make sure that we're going above and beyond, you know, oh, wow. because our wow magic really <coughs> guides not only what we do, but how we deliver every service and all of our programs and our procedures. Uh, okay. um, you know, it gets attention and inspires us to do more. So, you know, we just think of it always like, what can we do? And we supersize that. Mm -hmm. Oh, And we cool. incorporate, like, bring it into everything we do, too. Like, I'm a business developer, so part of the wow magic that I did was bring them to, we connected with an organization that um, kind of does, like, farming and stuff like that. Oh, so they, br okay. they are bringing our guests in and teaching them how to farm. Oh, so these cool. are like experiences they like may animal, never come like across. Like husbandry or um, like, like planting plants and plants and stuff okay, like that. Vegetables yeah. So and it's like stuff that they may have never come in contact with before. Okay. Like and now we're kind of opening right. up their world to it. Cool. Okay. Now you've used the term guests. Mm -hmm. Why guests? Why not clients? Or, or well, those terms kind of seem kind of cold. Like you're okay. an individual. You're a client. You're a guest when you come to our okay. program. When you come to our program, kind of like the Disney store. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay. very much the same in that. You're a guest. Um, in housing, you're a resident in the house. Um, you know, we just okay. want to make sure that we call our colleagues colleagues, not staff. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just feel like this terminology is something that's really like a positive okay. impact for mm -hmm. our guests and so for our colleagues. It's right in the questions. I'm like, okay, am I using the right terminology? Because, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody has, a, it's part of the culture, yeah. you yep. know, the wow culture. So, now, backing up a little bit, 
or maybe tangent. Um, we'll go into the events more, but you're more than just events. I mean, you provide work opportunities mm -hmm. for those that are differently abled. Mm -hmm. How would someone be referred? Is it a referral or do people mm -hmm. just say, oh, I have a special need. I need to come to you. I mean, how does that work? How, how does someone become one of your guests? So typically, Department of Developmental Services will send us a referral packet, um, but prior to that, people are going to come and tour our programs mm -hmm. because they're going to want to see who we are, what our services are, mm -hmm. you know, get to see our faces, what the actual program looks like. Okay. So we would set up a tour with somebody, they would come through, if that's something they would want to move on to, they would connect with their service coordinator and say, you know, we'd like to move forward with American training, okay. and then we would get the referral packet, and then that whole big process would start, you okay. know, of making sure that we have all the right contract information, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Before they would be accepted into our program. Okay, and once they get accepted, then what happens? Then the wow magic happens. The wow magic, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so. The um, magic of wow. <laughs> no. Yeah, so our guests would, you know, then once they would be accepted, they would pick a start date and they would come to our program. We would make sure that, you know, we're giving them that wow magic experience on their first day mm -hmm. and every day after that, of course. But, you know, we would make sure that we're providing them the services that they got contracted for. Okay. So let's talk about some of the day services. Now, day services, as opposed to residential, mm -hmm. those are kind of like the two big umbrellas. Yes. Or the two divisions. So tell me about some of the day services. So our day services program, um, as I said, we have the Andover site, which is our main office as well, okay. where our land institute is. And then we also have the Vol program and the Wakefield program. Um, all three programs have different services between the day programs. Okay. Um, so one of our big services um, that we've just launched is the CBDS mobile, meaning community-based day services. Um, and okay. what's really different about this program is instead of a transportation company going to pick up the loved one at their house, okay. it's us. Our colleagues are actually going out to do the pickups and drop-offs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they go in the morning, they're going to pick up, and then they go straight into the community. So there is no coming back to the facility oh, and then waiting, okay. you know, doing our morning meeting and then going back out. They're just going to go straight out into the community mm -hmm. and okay. start doing the great things that we do. Um, a lot of the focus of that program is on employment. So we're doing job mm -hmm. clubs, we're doing travel training as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that we're touching upon Wait, fitness. Backing up travel training, what's mm -hmm. that? Learning so how to travel? So learning <laughs> like the, internationally? The, yeah, or? public um, public system. Oh, public Kind of okay. like, for us, like we would have to learn how to use a train for the first time. Okay. And stuff like that. How to call for an Uber, Lyft, oh. all yep. that kind of stuff. So, you know, they're getting jobs. How to get a bus pass. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. So, um, okay. and then we do other things like cultural enrichment, recreation. So we're still having fun, and the wow magic is still part of our day. Um, what's really great is the vans are equipped with smart technology, so our colleagues are able to just go. We get the GPS systems in there. We're using tablets, so they can use that interactively in the communities as well. Oh, really? You know, and we're just looking for the really great opportunities in our local communities. You know, for our guests to get the best mm -hmm. experience possible daily. Okay, so the guests are. You provide job training, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then do you also find a job for yep. them? Yep. Yes. Or yep. Um, so my job would be as a business developer is I go out um, I j with each individual. I like to meet with them and see what their job skills are, um, what their dream jobs are too, because I want to okay. make sure that I'm meeting all of their needs. Yeah. Um, and so if they do have a dream job that they might not have the skills for, then we find a way to get those skills for them. Oh. So that way they, they, they're, do what, they're doing what they want to do and not what we feel like they need to do. Oh. So, um, and so then from there, I reach out to different places and see if they're hiring, um, try to get them oh. involved in the community. And the best part too is that once a lot of these, with I'll do feedback with the, the supervisors and stuff like that. Okay. And a lot of the times um, they come back to me with like amazing reviews of it and it kind of sends, it gives them like a, a form of a sense of community within their organization oh, too because cool. they're, they're developing natural supports for our guests. Oh. And so they kind of come together to make sure that they succeed too. So. Great. Mm -hmm. Now is there, how do you how do you find some of these businesses? Do the businesses come to you? Do you work with like the state department, DET uh, employment and training? Mm -hmm. um, you know how how do you get them the skill get your guests the skills? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, How does that happen? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, I kind of just reach out to the um, places of employment myself, kind of okay. explain who we are, what we do, 
um, see if they're they're hiring if they're hiring what roles might be a good fit for the individual oh, okay. um, and then from there as if they need any training skills we do a lot of the training internally so okay. we would find out what the job entails and then we can train them internally we have all sorts of things we have like cash registers money everything like that to help oh, train okay. them ourselves and then we, that way we set them up for success. And we're also doing assessments. So what mm -hmm. we do is every guest that has employment hours, we're gonna make an employment binder for them. Mm -hmm. okay. And what that's gonna entail is, you know, we're gonna find out, are they good at computers? Are they good with math, general work? What's okay. their tolerance for working to begin with? Communication, where they're at with their communication skills. Mm -hmm. Are they looking to work in an office? Do you have office skills, kitchen assessments, because a lot of people want to okay. work in the food industry. And then on top of that, to find out what our guests truly want to work in, we're actually asking them. So we're going to be mm -hmm. saying to them, you know, let's sit down and we have an assessment for a meaningful day, um, guest opinion. So, you know, what they truly want to do, um, a support needs summary, interest inventory. So they're just going to go through and just say, you know, how big of a group would they like to work with mm -hmm. individually, you know, a loud workplace not stuff like that mm -hmm. um, career clusters we also do our CBM assessment books and that's how we're really just gathering all the information possible so that they have a choice in where they work we're not just plugging okay. them in at random places we're finding out all this background information and then Noah's going out and mm -hmm. really connecting with those businesses to match what their assessments say mm -hmm. okay so basically Noah would take this binder mm -hmm. and look through it on a case-by-case -case yep. basis and then would you show it to a potential employer or is it like um, it's more no. that's more internally for okay. us but yeah, I, right. I would know um, what to pinpoint on with the employers so I would oh, know okay. who I'm looking for what what skill sets I want to present to the employer okay. so that they know that we're also putting the person in that's gonna succeed at the job and make a okay. good fit for the employer as long as is also with the individual now, I'm not sure how to be politically correct with this, but since the guests or the clients ha or the potentially employed have special needs, mm -hmm. is it still like the same pay scale? Is it still, mm -hmm. you know, a job or are there special jobs? You know, is it like something that's advertised on Monster, mm -hmm. not, you know? Yes. So, so, I mean, our guests have to be paid minimum wage in mm -hmm. you know, the state of Massachusetts. It's $11 an hour, so they have to be paid at minimum okay. $11 mm -hmm. an hour. But obviously, they can get paid more than that, and they would love to get who yeah. wouldn't. Well, yeah, who know. wouldn't? But, <laughs> but yeah, so th they're definitely doing that. Um, they're still going through the same process. They still have to fill out an application. Mm -hmm. They still have to submit okay. a resume. Same thing that like you and I, if we were to use Indeed, you would still have to have a resume. Mm -hmm. Go through the whole process. They'd still have to be background checked if that's something that's required of the job, mm -hmm. okay. and go through the job orientation. So they're making sure that they're being included in the same workplace atmosphere okay. that you and I would have the opportunity to have okay. and that's one thing that American training does make sure that you know we're training our guests to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. in the workplace okay. to speak up to learn workplace culture and just you know work. okay yeah don't want to sound politically no. correct <laughs> I'm just like okay you know with the yeah. political climate the way it is sometimes businesses aren't willing to branch out mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if, there, if you do encounter any type of discrimination in, in your work or is it pretty much an open relationship with the I'd companies. say it's a pretty open relationship. relationship. Yeah. yeah. A lot of our guests, either they're individually employed or we do group employment. Yeah. So some of our guests can't work um, individually somewhere, but we find jobs and we create positions for them within a functioning company that they can work as a group. So okay. we would actually have a support on site with them, which would be one of our job coaches. Yeah. And that's what's really lovely about working with American Training when we're doing group work. Um, when we create a group site and a relationship and we partner with a company on that, we're providing a service that we're guaranteed that that job is going to get done at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Oh, okay. um, we're going to bring in a crew of people that want to work there, that are qualified to work there. And then if someone doesn't work out, you know, we have other options of somebody else going mm -hmm. in their place. Oh, okay. And a lot of these people that are working in group work that, you know, we're trying to get them to eventually work independently by themselves, oh, okay. but mm. they need to build up certain skills first. So we're tracking that information, we're collecting okay. that data, and you know, we're reporting to their teams of people, you know, whether they live in a group home, DDS, their guardians, of their progress before we can get them to individual employment one day. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So wait, back up a little bit. <laughs> your your job coaches that are employed by like some of your colleagues yes. Yes. are placed individually with some of the guests to kind of coach mm -hmm. them just like in elementary schools yep. sometimes the kids have like a one-on-one -on -one yep. tutor type thing yeah yep. okay <laughs> cool okay so 
Do you have anything else to add about CBDS Mobile? I had to read that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Those um, acronyms <laughs> drive me. <laughs> no, it's just it's a really great program that it we does offer. Look, yeah. yeah. How amazing. big of a program is it? Is it you know 30 people? Is it 130 people? You know, how um, many? It's getting bigger and bigger. So it's something new that we had started. Um, we're running two vans out of Wakefield currently, but our Andover site and our Wool um, sites are a lot bigger, and they're running a lot more vans out in the communities, and mm -hmm. we just okay. keep getting more vans added on. So as the need comes up we're creating a spot for them. Mm -hmm. Now with the vans, like the Wakefield site or the mm -hmm. Lowell site, do the jobs always stay in those communities or like would Lowell potentially go into Chelmsford or something? Oh or yeah, so yeah. they can still go in the surrounding they communities. Out, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like our guests that come to the Wakefield site don't necessarily all live in Wakefield. They mm -hmm. might live okay. in Melrose, they might live in Linfield. So, you know, we're doing the whole surrounding communities. Okay. We're not going to be going to the South Shore. We're not going to okay. go to yeah, Maine like for the job. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you know, I had an hour and a half commute, you know, one way before I had <laughs> yeah. kids and it's like, well, yeah, we're, we're not going to spend our whole day on a van um, yeah. driving out to a site. We want to make sure that they're having a meaningful day the whole day. Okay. Um, what about some of your other programs? You have, um, do you want to talk about acquired brain injury? Yep. So we have our acquired brain injury program, um, which is running in Andover and in Wakefield and soon to be Lowell as well. Oh, wow. Um, so this okay. is working with individuals mm -hmm. that have had um, acquired brain injuries or traumatic brain injuries in their oh, life okay. and need more services. We are helping them find jobs mm -hmm. and just learn their day to day okay. task again. Now, with, it just popped into my head, you're helping with finding jobs mm -hmm. and you know you talked we talked about the application process mm -hmm. and you know creating a resume what about finding um, a place to live I mean are these are your guests you know still living at home do you are some of them able to live independently do you help them you know find an apartment find a lease you know make sure they understand how to pay all their bills I mean is that involved too or is it just limiting to like a job search so we are helping with them with their self-help skills mm -hmm. you know which would be oh, some of that okay. stuff um, they can live in a group home they can live with their guardians it really is a base you know a case-by-case -case kind oh, of thing okay. um, mm -hmm. we do have specialized housing at American training okay I was just you about know. to ask do you have some of the mm -hmm. specialized housing yes so do you want to talk more about that uh, yeah, we can definitely talk I a know, little I'm bit more. I know, I'm just <laughs> going out of order, but, you know. So, one thing um, about American Training is that we just don't build houses, we build homes, um, and we say it's by one family member at a time. So, it's not okay. just someone that's coming into our group home and we're like, this is your group home, you're a family with us. Okay. Um, many of our houses are across the Merrimack Valley area, um, mm -hmm. but they are custom fit to adapt to the people that we're bringing in. Okay. How, ma how big, how many residents in one of these homes? Would it be like seven, or is it like a dorm, or? Uh, it's not like a dorm, no, it's okay. like a regular house. Um, yeah, so okay. you're in your communities, we're in your neighborhoods, um, and okay. a lot of people will probably recognize that once they realize that, you once know, we're they just. they see the big purple van driving. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we blend into the actual neighborhood, you know, we're making okay. sure that, you know, our house still looks great, like the rest of the neighbor's houses, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody mows the lawn. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yep, all that good yes. stuff. Yeah, so they're in a, a regular house, they have their rooms, oh, and then we okay. just have the colleagues on staff to help with them with their day by day. They have their own bedrooms, or sometimes okay. they do share. Mm -hmm. Um, depending on the living situation that they have. Um, you know, our houses are always going to be handicap accessible, different okay. stuff like that. Now, the guests that live in some of American Training's houses, do they also pay a form of rent, or how does that work? Yes, um, they're still f paying a form okay. of rent, yeah, and they're working mm -hmm. through BDS with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I don't mean to sound remedial. <laughs> I just, no, no. you know. Because... <laughs> Before I encountered American Training's tent, mm -hmm. I had actually never heard of the organization. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden after that, I start seeing the vans Vans everywhere. Like, yes. Yep. <laughs> wow, were they <laughs> never there or did I just like, you know, yes. Captain Obvious or something? <laughs> so, okay, what about... Um, the community-based day program. Did we already touch on that? So because our community-based day program is similar to the CBDS mobile. Okay. Um, they're still going to go out into the community. What's a little bit different about that is that they're actually being transported in through a transportation company to our site. Okay. Um, and then once they're at our site, then eventually they, after they have like a morning meeting, they go out into the community. They're mm -hmm. doing the same great things that our mobile agreements are doing, um, and they're still having all those same experiences. But the difference is, is that they're not on transportation companies mm -hmm. to come to the oh, program okay. to then get back on a van to go back into the community to come back to the program and then go on a van to go home instead oh. with the mobile program we're okay. going to your house we're picking you up we're going straight so into the, the mobile community. program is just like an uber ride to your yeah. job almost and yeah. the community-based day program 
there's like a meeting first and then they go out? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. and our mobile program is still having a meeting and all that stuff. Not all of okay. them are working. They're going to experience different things in the communities. Like a great example is, you know, today there's all the free museum Fridays mm -hmm. in the communities. Ooh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to a bunch of museums today in the local Fine. areas and stuff like that. So it's, you know, different types Bring of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Plus yeah. Rain. Oh, I know. <laughs> Fun. Okay, and what is Dayhab? So our day hab model is for our guests that need more medical attention. Um, they aren't okay. looking for employment at this point in their lives. Um, they're working on different skills that they still need to learn. Um, and that could be a wide range of different skills they could be working on. Okay. We have a nursing on site at all times, so mm -hmm. that way any nursing needs can be met. Okay. Is this all also like occupational therapy yep, as so well as physical therapy? Or yep. American Training has their own physical therapist and occupational therapist, okay. and we also have speech as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have behaviorists to work with anyone that is going through difficult times mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff like that. Okay. Now, as you mentioned all of this, I keep thinking of the schools. Now, do you work with schools? Yeah, no, I didn't have this down. It's just a no, it's something fine. that popped into my head. So, do you work with like school systems for when the guests or when these individuals mm -hmm. graduate and move on? Is there like a transitional phase? Yep, that that's called the turning 22s. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. they have their own service coordinator through their local branch and they mm -hmm. that's when their parents would start going out or their guardians start going out and looking at all the different programs and opportunities okay. that they would think they would be a good fit for. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we do connect with the schools to make sure that, you know, when we start seeing that someone's interested in okay. coming to American Training, we're going to go out to the schools, observe them, you know, get to know who they are. Okay. Let them know who <laughs> so we are. So you do have a, a yep. an overlap. It's not just, you know, yeah. like a black and white line. Okay, what about dementia? When I think of dementia, I always think of like older people, mm. but does it affect younger people? And how does that fit in with your services? Yeah, so dementia can really truly affect anybody. It tends to obviously affect people more that are older. Um, okay. Our what we see is that our guests can actively age with us, um, and so okay. you know we have people that might be in the dayhab model that you know they've gotten dementia and their peers are no longer their peers due to the dementia. So we're going to carve out a little area for them okay. so that we're actually making sure their programming is for them. They have different skills that they're going to be needing to work on, and we want to make sure that they're able to actively age with us. Okay, which just triggered another question. <laughs> How long do people generally work with American Training? Is it like once they find a job and they're on their own, or is it like a continual relationship that Continu lasts continual, yes. until they retire, mm -hmm. or? Yep, so a lot of our guests, um, it's a continual relationship. I mean, there are some guests that will eventually move into a contract if they're working, where we're just doing checks on them. Mm -hmm. They're finding their own transportation to their jobs now, okay. you know, and we're just keeping that supportive service there. We have others that are in our model, and they go until they no longer want to come anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So there's yeah. not a one-size-fits-all. So yeah, it's eventually, much, okay. yeah, they'll, like, age out, and they'll just be like, I don't, you know, want to come here anymore. Yeah. I'm oh, going to retire okay. now. Cool. Yeah. Makes you happy. What's Starworks? Is um, that more part of the wow thing? Or? <laughs> so Starworks is more one of our um, career re like resources. Um, so what they what Starworks does is they meet with the person individually. Um, it's basically kind of like what I do, but a little bit more. They they use out through outside supports and everything like that. Meet with them, find their skill set. Um, any skill sets they need to build on, they help them build on that skill set. Okay. They might have an individual that comes to them with no work history at all. So then they just have to kind of oh, build okay. on what their skill sets are to help them get employed to start the work history. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, okay. I, my brain is, is still processing. I'm a little slow. Um, backing up a little bit. I saw this on your website. Did we cover outrageously memorable? I like that little catchphrase. <laughs> is that part of like the whole wow thing or is that separate? Yep. You know, um, outrageous. You know, all I can think of is, you know, Aquaman going, outrageous. 
No, um, our CEO, Tom Connors, is the one that came up with the WOW Magic philosophy. Okay. And we always just want to make sure that everything we're doing, our day to days, everything is outrageously memorable for our guests. You know, okay. they've come to American Training. When they leave at the end of the day, they've said, like, wow, I've had a really great day here. And it's from beginning to end. So that could start with transportation. If they're on our transportation company, Vanway, it's their birthday, then our company, Vanway, is going to decorate their seat. Oh, or if fun. it's like Halloween, they're going to decorate the vans, Christmas, all that good kind of stuff. So from the minute they leave their home to come on to transportation to then coming to program, we want to make sure that their whole day is outrageously memorable. Wow. I don't have a special need, but can I work for you guys? Yes, you can. <laughs> can <laughs> <you> <laughs> job? It's a great I want to have an mem mem outrageously memorable day. <laughs> so, okay, we touched upon specialized housing. Mm -hmm. Was there something that you wanted to add? The, you know, there are the, the, the group homes. Mm -hmm. Do you work with other residential facilities or? So we have other services. Okay. Um, we have individual support services called ISS. Um, we do in-home support services, IHS. We have shared living as well, adult family care, um, intensive supports. We have acquired brain injury companion services. We do respite as well, so anyone that needs you know if someone's going on vacation they need a place to stay in the meantime oh, we okay. offer that as well um and just other great you know programs throughout the day okay now for the individuals where you provide these services are they also folded into the other like the the job part of american services or yeah american so they Training can attend our day have program mm -hmm. as okay. well um that is a choice that they have that they can come to one of our you know okay. facilities that's no, i'm just wondering like would you just do respite care for somebody who's already not involved in american training or d do they have to be already clients or members or guests does that make sense that does make sense um i believe we can take people that are not guests okay. of ours mm -hmm. okay just checking what you know you mentioned some of the residential services at home can we expand on some of those like you you just had a bullet list and i forgot all of <laughs> the ones that you said um but so just like uh, different opportunities for a way for someone to live in the community okay. um, different choices is really all that okay. is mm -hmm. um, whether they're living with another family that has chosen to take on somebody that mm -hmm. needs a little bit more support they okay. feel that they can actually do that um then they can do a shared living you know they can mm -hmm. live in one so of our group shared homes. living would be with other other guests outside uh, outside of outside. American training outside. so it would be a oh, family outside. that would be interested in taking somebody on to live in their house with them kind of like to a help foster them. Yeah, sort of kind of yeah okay so non-relative yes yes okay but then there's also people who are relatives who keep that person mm -hmm. okay and this is outside of the general services that you provide you just make the connection I mean, we don't know too, too much about specialized uh, okay. housing because we are day services. All right, yeah, also, I mean, all right, we'll yeah. move on, we'll move <laughs> on. Um, what about clinical services? Can we touch upon that at all? Yeah, so we have always a nurse on site in our day have programs. We want to make sure that they're, you know, supported in every way that they okay. can be. On site, I, I'm just trying to get this on site, is at your offices, not yes. necessarily at where the van brings the guests. Correct. So if they're in our okay. CBDS unit, um, no, they, a nurse isn't traveling with okay. them. Yeah. Um, she's going to be on site. Um, so okay. we have different um, types of clinical services where, you know, we've mentioned some of them, the speech, physical therapy, occupational mm -hmm. therapy, um, behavioral services. Um, we can provide behavioral modifying medication plans, mm -hmm. clinical assessments, behavior okay. plans, um, positive behavioral supports is always something that we're trained on doing. Okay. So, and generally... I'm, I'm just trying to map it out in my head. This is for the guests that are still in the job training portion trying to get a job? Um, this is for all the guests, all whether the they're guests. in full-time day have or they're in the community-based day services okay. um, or in CBDS mobile, you know, uh, we have okay. these different services for them depending mm -hmm. on what their contracts what are. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just, <laughs> it's all starting to come <laughs> together, but it's all still kind of mushy. It's to make sure that we have as much support for them as possible that they might oh, okay. need, depending on what is in their plan. Yeah, and all colleagues are PAC trained, um, and we are also CPR certified, mm -hmm. and a lot but of our colleagues. What's PAC trained? So it is a kind of a, like a least resistive kind of method. Um, oh, so okay. if we did have to restrain somebody, we're trained to do it in mm -hmm. a way that wouldn't hurt somebody. And to okay. use the most like de-escalating way, yeah, the oh, most okay. invasive de-escalating ways to okay. help. When I hear PAC, I think of another acronym, <laughs> and you know. 
There are only so many letters in the alphabet and so many combinations, yeah. so eventually they're reused. Okay, now how many nur is it just one nurse per? Um, it depends per on the site? size of the site. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the size of the site as well as whatever client yep. base happens yes. to be there at the time. Yes, yep. the clinical needs and all okay. that. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone were to utilize your services, would they ever come in with their own, like, healthcare provider, if they needed like a one-on-one, -on -one, or would you guys be covering their one-on-one? -on -one? So some of our guests have one-on-ones, um, not necessarily for like nursing one-on-ones. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. They would have more of like a support system in place. Our colleagues are MAP certified as okay. well, mm -hmm. so we're training them that you know they don't necessarily need to have a nurse sitting by them. You know we're okay. trained in handling a lot of these situations. Okay. And is it? Yeah, never mind. I'll skip that one. On your website, I also found out about the Lair Institute. L A. R E. Mm -hmm. Since it's all capital letters, I'm <laughs> guessing that it's another acronym. <laughs> yes. Um, so our Lair Institute is really the heart of our educational, um, occupational skill training and job okay. placement programs. Um, so just kind of lightly touch upon it. They focus on business programs, healthcare programs, trade programs, and education programs. And okay. so they're just um, working with anyone in the community that wants either fur further education mm -hmm. or to get a certificate in something. Okay. Then they have that opportunity to go to the Lair Institute to okay. continue that. So that's like after the public schools are done. So it's like yep. 22 and up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like, yeah, it's an institute, kind of like a college mm -hmm. or, okay. Yeah. Neat. Well, that's pretty cool. We talked about it briefly. What is Vanway? <laughs> Vanway is our Vanway. transportation company. Okay. Um, Are they all big purple vans? Well, well, they all have the fabulous star on them. The fabulous star. Yeah. The so wow star. The wow yes. star is definitely on all of them. So not all of them are big vans. Um, okay. We have minivans. We have town cars as well. Oh, so we okay. have different mm -hmm. forms of transportation. We have smart a huge cars. fleet. No, probably yeah. not too many smart cars. No smart cars yet. Yes. Yet. But um, at Vanway, every passenger safety comes first. And then we okay. add a little bit of fun and entertainment um, to our signature wow magic to make the rides yeah, more about memorable. Like a birthday. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So and then um, w the uniqueness to some of our vans is that they also have a DVD player in them too. Oh. So if they're t on their way to their to wherever location they're going to, they okay. also can watch uh, movies and stuff like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Um, and the, the so unless you're my daughter, and then you get car sick, so you don't want to watch those <laughs> oh, DVDs. That's fair too. <laughs> and they have the they have um, two way radios, so that they're always in communication. Uh, okay. Um, they also have right. um, e pads, so that we know where each guest is at any given time out in the community. Oh, it's a okay. it's a form of safety, like a GPS type thing. Mm -hmm. Or oh yeah. wow. Now, outside drivers are hired for this. Yep. Yes. So oh, okay. um, they go through our people and culture, which is what we call human resources. We okay. gave it a great wow magic name. Oh, of course. <laughs> Gotta love that. Um, so for our hiring process, you know, we have our standard, you know, we're going to read your resume, we're going to okay. go through the interview mm -hmm. process, but we also have our wow magic interview to make oh, sure that you're a cultural fit as well. So our Vanway people are doing that as well. So you're willing to sing happy birthday. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yes. 7 a.m. Yes. in the morning. Okay. Yep. And then everyone is background checked as usual. <laughs> No, do they have to have special license? I special licenses like a school bus driver or no? They're regular or vans, regular? Okay. yeah. So just a valid driver's right. license. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what the you know the classes of licensing are. And is it generally the transportation? Mm -hmm. Is it generally just to and from a job site or your offices, or is it also like um, for like some of the the community homes, you know, grocery shopping or doctor's office visits or anything like that. So our colleagues would be doing the later of what you said, so okay. appointments and stuff like that, but we have access to their vans, which is mm -hmm. great. So we have access to this huge fleet of vans. Um, okay. On the day to day, our, when our colleagues are going out into the community for a museum trip, let's say for today, okay. um, it's our colleagues driving the van, not Vanway, but we have access to their vans. Uh -huh. um, Vanway is just providing the transportation to and from program. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go back to the, um, you know, if people are working, is it like full-time jobs? Is it part-time or is it just depending on the needs of that, per uh, needs and skill set of that individual? Yep, it depends on the needs and skill set of the individual. Um, they are, they can have full-time jobs if they like. Okay. Um, they also can have part-time jobs. So it's, it's um, depending on what the individual is like interested in 
pursuing stuff like that. Okay, because so. I keep thinking of, like, you mentioned a trip to a museum. I'm like, well, if you're working full time, mm -hmm. how do you fit all these WOW events in there, like the museum trips and the special events? I mean, <laughs> there's only so much time in the day, and eight hours a day should be should be spent sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> So how does everything how does everything fit together? So we make schedules so we mm -hmm. know okay. what people are going to be doing before they do it. So okay. you know a lot of our guests are routine oriented. Um, so we're making sure that they have that information at the start of the weeks or months, depending on who they are. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to know when they're working, when work is coming mm -hmm. up, when we get notified if they're working, if it's that okay. type of job, um, and then yeah. Now, do you guys close on snow days or anything, or do you stay open year round? Um, we'll close if it's a really bad storm. Yeah, safety um, first. Yeah, when they call it a state of emergency, I'm yes. like, just yeah. wondering, you know, schools cancel if it's snowing, but I'm wondering, like, if you guys close as yeah, well. Yeah, so if the weather's really bad, we're not going to put okay. anyone at risk just mm -hmm. to come to the program. Um, that's not, okay. obviously, not a wow magic. Yeah. So <laughs> we want to make sure no one gets hurt. Safety that's first, definitely. Okay. okay. We talked about events. Now, mm -hmm. are, are all of those events fundraisers, or do you also do separate fundraisers so the events that I've kind of named so far aren't yeah. really a fundraiser event okay. we do have fundraiser events mm -hmm. um, that one would be a big one is our October gala Ooh. so it's gonna have the same theme um, so this year is still Harry gonna be Harry, Harry Potter, Potter theme. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we just have a silent auction or whatever we choose to do that mm -hmm. year to you know drum up donations and stuff like that mm -hmm. or partnerships with different people and mm -hmm. companies. Now is that like a costume thing as well or is it like a black tie gala? gala? I think it just depends on gala who you are. Gala. You get some people that dress up. Um, some of the colleagues will definitely get into costume this year. Is, yeah. yeah, this year but is definitely a lot to. of fun. Yes. We make sure we have all the big celebrities there too. Yeah. Like if it's Harry Potter, he's definitely going to be there yes. with his whole crew and all that good stuff. <laughs> oh, Daniel Radcliffe? No. <laughs> <laughs> Different Harry Potter. <laughs> Earlier before, right at the beginning of the show, you mentioned the whole Harry Potter theme, and you t also talked about the Hogwarts Express. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, is that like the Purple Line commuter rail, or what do you do for a Hogwarts Express? So one of our colleagues, I'm like um, really fascinated yeah. by this. this we have really fun. talented colleagues in yes. American training, and that's what's really amazing about us okay. is that we have people that are talented and really want to get involved with this. Um, mm -hmm. So one of our colleagues, her and her husband, actually built the Hogwarts Express at their house. Um, oh, they use okay. a golf cart, mm -hmm. from what oh, I believe, okay. and I'm they thinking put like it all a real together. train, and I'm like, okay, you're it limited. A real, in real your train. train. It looks like a real train. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it did the whole light up, you know, oh, the yeah. bell, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, actually, the Wakefield site did make the Honey Dukes candy display, so we actually mm -hmm. made the whole storefront, you know, oh. went out, bought the lumber. Wow. Um, a lot of our guests, they actually did night classes with us. Where do you and put all of this stuff? We have stores. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, we get really into it and make sure the guests are part of it. You know, they got to actually, mm -hmm. at our site, we made that candy display, and they were part of the whole process of what materials we're going to use, how mm -hmm. we're going to go buy them, the money skills process. So we made it the whole learning experience oh, as yeah. well, yeah. on top of what they were already doing and what skill set. Building skills, I would mm -hmm. yeah. know. Yes. You know. Power tool. Yeah. <laughs> Express. So other than the October gala, mm -hmm. silent auction, what are some of the other events that you do or fundraisers? And then we could go and talk about more. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we have someone in our company, Gio, and he works with a lot of developing the relationships with our partners mm -hmm. in the communities. Okay. Um, he hosts different things. Like um, quite recently, at one of the restaurants, they had one of those, you go to the restaurant and oh. you get a percentage of what oh, someone okay. does. Yeah. So we do different things. It seems to be things. coming a lot more popular. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So different opportunities like that where he's working and reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you mentioned the the colleagues mm -hmm. and being very creative and mm -hmm. you mentioned the guests do you ever have the opportunity for people to just volunteer and help out yes, yes. Um, so if anyone's ever interested in volunteering they can visit our website mm -hmm. where they can find you know more information on the volunteering but you can definitely volunteer at any of the day programs um, mm -hmm. with our okay. guests um, or sponsor us or partner with us in any way um, you know there's different opportunities within everyone gets trained before they come on board with us you know they get to know who the guests are okay. the culture all that good stuff so we're not just throwing you in yeah. you get to have that whole experience have fun, yeah, have fun. <laughs> but yeah. yeah we make sure that everyone you know is comfortable with who they're working with we're screening mm -hmm. them as well because not okay. everyone might not be a match for us so we want to make sure that people are okay. definitely coming in that are supportive to our guests and their needs make so sure it's enjoyable for everybody okay. yeah now what are some can you elaborate on some of the roles? I mean, do, would you ever use a volunteer to 
go on a job site with someone or is that strictly have to be we would use a job coach for that because that's yeah because that person's going to be trained and they're going to understand the guest needs and employment yeah and and each individual what they need what they're looking for yeah but um, a volunteer would be be great for like a tie-dye day one of our big wow magic events stuff like that like getting involved with us in those ways is great Um, we have interns come as well where they're going to get to learn how to you know work in this industry and different stuff like that a lot of people that volunteer Mm -hmm. may have Mm -hmm. interest or a loved one that's been you know, mm-hmm. they could be disability or anything like that. So, you know, different opportunities we within. We also have volunteers, um, like for some of the sites, I, we have someone that comes in and does like Zumba with them. So oh, if anybody who, fun. yeah, okay. so any like um, things like that, volunteering, teaching them a skill oh, or helping okay. them with any like health stuff, stuff like that, we could use volunteers for that as well. Yep. And our dog therapy people are volunteers mm-hmm. as well. Did you say dog therapy? Mm-hmm. Yep. So we bring dogs in on oh, site. Oh, I want to hear more guests. about dog therapy. <laughs> dog therapy is great. Um, so, so they're not service dogs. Well, they are. They're they service are. dogs. They okay. Are. Yeah. So we have this great curriculum, um, American Training. We do have our own um, curriculum developer, and she actually creates curriculum that are based off of our guest needs. So we're not just pulling okay. random information off the internet or. You know, we're really because if focusing. it's on the internet, it's got to be true. Exactly, <laughs> we're making sure that you know our curriculum is matching what our guest specific needs are. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of them it was obviously dog therapy, and we have a dog come in to each site, and there's different levels to oh. the curriculum, which is great. Okay. We're tapping on the different ways that someone's going to be learning. So whether it's visual, whether it's touching, mm-hmm. where it's hearing, you know, we're making sure that there's a whole component to it. Um, we have adaptive equipment for our guests to use on all the curriculums mm-hmm. that we're doing, okay. and we're really making sure that you know they're getting that experience. And as they're moving through levels, they can earn a trinket at the end to say, "I finished level one. I've moved to level two. Mm-hmm. Um, for the service dogs, you know, we're looking at bringing in police dogs, the fire department, anyone that has a service dog that for a different need, you know. Oh, so our guests have the okay. experience to see those different kinds of animals. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun! Yeah. Now, with a program something like you know bringing somebody in either the Zumba person or the service dog is it a one-time thing or is it like a monthly schedule or again it all depends on the individual depending on how much they want to volunteer Uh, for like the Zumba for instance that person comes every Thursday and does Zumba or does some sort of exercise with them because I'm thinking some of your clients like the repetition and like the predictability and the schedule so I mean, does that play a role in before you start a new program, how long it's going to last or mm-hmm. how frequently it is? Yep. And so yeah. we factor all that in, you know, like dog therapy, they're coming weekly to our sites. You know, it's a standard. They come the same day, mm-hmm. the same time. So our guests know to expect that. Oh, cool. Now, do you publish like a calendar for all of your guests? Saying yep. Okay. So our, um, our guests get some of them, you know, different needs. Um, some of them we don't necessarily have to do that for, um, but we give them a calendar of, you know, this is what's going to happen. They know at the Wakefield okay. site that every Monday the dog is going to be coming. Okay. you know so they have those expectations they know the schedule ahead of time that day they go over the schedule every morning so they know what to okay. expect throughout the day as mm-hmm. well so nothing's a surprise I'm just wondering like for you know some of the wow ev- the s- specific events like the museum trip mm-hmm. or like the service mm-hmm. dogs or the Zumba mm-hmm. somebody who may not necessarily need a schedule still might want to come in for Zumba yeah. so is, yeah. is that an option most of our guests um, come five days a week. Um, oh, we okay. have some guests that you know come only so like a certain a nine number. To five thing or? It's actually our program runs from nine o'clock to three o'clock. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. American training is open from eight to four thirty. So we're there before they come in, and oh, we're there okay. after as well. Got it. Um, and so that's how we're planning up the days. We're making sure that we're ready for them when they come in, and then we can then separate, go our separate ways, do our thing. Okay. Now we talked a little bit more about you know Noah working with the partner organizations like the businesses Mm -hmm. if I don't know if it's your role or somebody else's if a business partners with you is it Mm -hmm. just for job opportunities or might a business partner with you for another reason like providing volunteers because I know a lot of businesses have like the yeah, community absolutely. Um, any community uh, connection I make, it's either business or volunteer situation. Um, so uh, we do have some that are that are group sites, so they go and they work and they receive a paycheck and everything. Okay. But then we do have things like the zoo that they'll go and they'll volunteer their time, and that's like an every other week thing. It depends oh, on what that organization needs, and then okay. we kind of fit in a schedule with them. Oh, fun. Yeah. Now, how many businesses roughly do you have any idea that you encompass? I'd mm-hmm. say that's kind of hard to like ballpark yeah, right so now because, many. Okay. yeah, I know the Wakefield site, but then Andover has oh, it, Lowell yeah. has it, and then anyone in specialized housing that's made a partnership, it'd be really hard okay. to narrow that number down. <laughs> now I'm just wondering for like other people if they want to know what kind of businesses, is there a list somewhere on your website of partnering organizations? 
I don't know if it's on our website. That might want to like but yeah. support. Oh, you know, you work with this, you know, company X. Mm-hmm. Well, I like your organization. I so I want to help support company X. Yeah, and I think so. the uniqueness with our organization too is that we have so many different skill sets that any organization, we could probably find a way to cooperate with them and find either if it's like a business situation or a volunteer situation, we would have the guests that have those skill sets that we could then put them into that situation. Now, we are running out of time. We have about (laughs) seven or eight minutes left. Can you tell me like some of like your most memorable experience or is there something that we haven't mentioned that you really want to make sure that the general public might be aware of that they might not now be aware of well i have to put you on the spot (laughs) i'm going to i don't know there's so many memorable experiences Mm -hmm. um when i came on board i remember i started in the wool site and Mm -hmm. they had this big fourth of july party that was just great i mean just seeing all the colleagues out there cooking and just doing everything was really wonderful and then around halloween time the Lowell site puts on this fabulous haunted house mm-hmm. and then they Ooh. get into it it takes up a big portion of their program they mm-hmm. invite the other sites to come help set it up and then they invite the public and the guests and you know from all the different sites and housing oh, wow. to come check it out during is the day is it like really scary or is it like a fun scary it's like a fun, it's scary. fun scary yeah, yeah. Okay. it's definitely a fun scary because i like fun scary but i don't like going <laughs> through haunted houses and have like real people jump out and attack me because that gets no one's attacking you but they have real people in it okay. and all that stuff and our guests are very involved in it and i think mm-hmm. that's a really great experience one of their traditions that they've been doing for like a Fun. very very long time and you said general public could come yeah i believe that they invite like the guardians in and stuff oh. like that dds can come in and all that to check out their haunted house and Fun. everything mm-hmm. yeah and wakefield has really just really grown as a site and had mm-hmm. so many great opportunities um i've been there for two years now and okay. i would say that you know every day is an experience with yes. them every day is unique and that's what i have to say is really special about oh, american okay. training is that it's hard to just pinpoint one fabulous thing that mm-hmm. american okay. training is doing right now or in the past because i just like have all these things coming into my head where i'm like oh my god that was great or this individual did this and uh, yeah there's just a lot of really great memorable moments mm-hmm. i would say like each season especially oh mm-hmm. cool and it's yeah. it's amazing this company it's not uh, just a job you're part of their lives like oh, you become okay. family to them so it's it's very unique in that aspect. Yeah, and I would say too, American Training is really good at focusing on the colleagues as well. So mm-hmm. it's a really great place to work. So one thing that we do that's really, I think, unique to the company is we hold spring break. So um, Tom Connors, our CEO, brings in no, people. Th- pause. Yep. <laughs> Tom. Yep. Is he also the founder? Yes. Or has um, okay. Yep. So he's the founder of American Training. Thought I remember reading that somewhere. I just wanted to clarify. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's great. So he's based out of our Andover office, the main office. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing that he does is he really recognizes colleague potential and you know how to further train us. So mm-hmm. um, one day a year we shut down. We don't have any day hab programs running. We still have specialized housing because okay. that would never stop. Yep. Um, and we gather all the colleagues together at the Andover Country Club and they Ooh. do this massive training where we have speakers come in, we learn more about different things, how to work with our guests, how to provide better services, okay. and I think that's a really great opportunity, aside from all the trainings that we get to go to throughout mm-hmm. the state that mm-hmm. come up okay. everywhere that you know you can sign up for and all of that. And I think that's a really great opportunity where you know the colleagues are first, they do colleague appreciation days as Ooh, well, fun. which is always fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they do things at Canopy Lake Park mm-hmm. for us. I was about to say, you know, this spring break thing. I, I don't think I want to go to training. I think I'd rather go to like, you know, Canopy yeah. Lake Park or something. But what's great about the spring break thing too is though is that we get to go all out. So with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter theme, okay. we all dressed up. Yes. The oh, whole, yes. there's about fun. 300 people in a room and we're all dressed like students from Harry mm-hmm. Potter. And it's just great. You look across and you see everybody. You have to wear the Wizarding it. hat to find out what house you're in. Well, we did have <laughs> we that. Did have that, that, that was yes. at, at the gala yep. and that was a really great thing. And then they got to be sorted into it and they got like, a little specialty cookie from a bakery that mm-hmm. was donated. Mm-hmm. And and it was just awesome. So if they were in Slytherin, they got a green cookie. Mm-hmm. If it was Hufflepuff, they got the yellow. Oh, wow. So it was really awesome. Yes. Fun. Yeah. Now, on all of the special events that you do, like the zoo trips mm-hmm. or I can't remember any of the other ones that you mentioned right now because there are so many of them, do staff or colleagues get to go to all of them or is it only the ones that directly affect you? So if they were going to the museum trip, um, so there's a bunch of museums today that are for free. Okay. So the guests ahead of time are going to pick out which museums they might sign up for and okay. say, I want to go to the PBD Essex Museum today. You know, and then obviously the colleagues are going with them. The community support colleagues are okay. going to be out there with them. Um, you know, if I have a colleague that says, I really want to go to the PBD Essex Museum, I don't want to go to 
the Lowell quote exam, then choice. we would say, oh, okay, well then, yeah, you could definitely go there. You can have some choice in that too. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure that our colleagues have a little bit of choice and okay. our guests always have a choice. Mm -hmm. But like, you don't necessarily interact with the colleagues all the time or with the, the guests all the time. Would you be able to go to the PVD Assets Museum if there was an extra seat on the van or something? Definitely. Yeah. You know, if that oh, had cool. if my schedule yeah. allowed for it, definitely okay. I can go in. Yeah, they encourage that. So it's, it's really nice. Like we volunteered for um, the Red Sox a couple weekends ago and we went yeah. and we did the green team helped um, yeah. do the recycling program and stuff like that. Right. And that wasn't, I didn't necessarily have to go, but I went with them because yeah. I really wanted to experience that with them. Fun. Yeah. Excellent. Now, again, I didn't put this on there, so I don't know if you know, and feel free to say, look on the website. What are the plans, if there are any, to expand American training? Well, we're definitely looking at expanding our CVDS mobile program. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is definitely something that the communities have really reacted to. People really want to see their loved ones in this kind of programming. Um, so we're definitely going to be continuing to expand that. Wakefield is open for more referrals, so we're definitely taking mm -hmm. in more referrals for our okay. acquired brain injury program, for our day hab program, for our regular community-based day services mm -hmm. program, or for the mobile services. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of um, room for growth and expansion. Okay. Specialized housing, as the need arises, they'll find more houses in the local communities that, you know, okay. match what their needs are for those residents. So, you know, we're always looking, you know, for better ways to grow and expand. Gotcha. Now, again, with thinking of growing and expanding, um, are potential clients or potential guests ever turned away because you don't have the resources available? Or if somebody needed them, would you end up pulling more people on board. I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's someone that we truly feel like we can't service, then we're not going to do them that injustice and yeah. bring them in. Okay. Um, you know, we would be very honest with that. Well, I mean, if based on space and availab uh, staff availability yep. and resources available. Definitely not always willing to take in more people set. if we, you know, as we get higher in our census, then okay. we're going to be bringing in more colleagues. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our main goal is to always make sure that we're in our ratios, meaning mm -hmm. that, okay. you know, we're probably one, you know, an example would be a one to seven ratio. We would always have like a one colleague to the seven. We wouldn't be like one colleague to 20 people yeah, okay. you know because that wouldn't be fair to them it's not fair to the colleague it's just not fair to everybody yeah. involved and that's not the purpose of the programs okay no I was thinking more of a qualified guest who mm -hmm. meets all the criteria you wouldn't turn them away say oh, sorry we don't have enough staff oh no, no definitely no. never no. not okay. no. we would figure that out yeah oh, we would hire more staff we hire more staff <laughs> okay well I wasn't sure if there was like limitations on that but you would not believe it but we are out of time oh, oh. So see, it wasn't that bad, you know, <laughs> no, not an hour. So I want to thank you guys very much. Thank you. Um, hopefully I didn't sound too remedial, but I did enjoy learning more about American Training Incorporated. Oh, thank you for having us. us. And I also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our conversation as much as I did. And again, I want to thank everybody for the recent 4th of July parade victory. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I will s definitely, you will see us next year in town, but I will definitely see you around town. Have a great night and enjoy the summer. Good night.